we're back. Oda has not changed the expression on his face. What is he seeing? Then again, I kind of like his face that way. Clueless, shocked, an amalgamation of all kinds of insecurity perhaps? Anyway, welcome back Alpha Troop. What happened? Yeah, seriously. Date. Iris. It's you. It's me. Okay. Um. Iris, there's something I need to ask you. All right, we're going to jump right into the point here. Come with me. If you want to live. Mm -hmm. We're starting this episode hot. We're starting this episode really hot. Police headquarters, Iris is here. Interrogation of Iris. Oda probably is going to tag along. But don't worry, don't worry. I feel good about this moment. Hey. Iris, I'm going to ask you some questions. I want my lawyer. What? I'm not required to answer any of your questions without legal representation. Boss, she's right. Uh, uh, I didn't know you would know all that. Well, Date? Unless you want me to counter sue for defamation and unlawful questioning, I suggest you leave this room and allow me to contact my lawyer. Boss, what do we do here? She got you on board barrel. <sighs> I mean, I mean, I mean, she doesn't have to answer anything. She owes us nothing in this timeline. If anything, she's just a pop idol, not the best friend we met and hung out with and raced and all that cool stuff back in over in Iris land. But Alpha Troop, I ask you a question. Why is Boss here now? She wasn't with us. I, I know why she wasn't with us because, you know, back when <laughs> number 89 destroyed us. But, you know, she's with us now and I just feel like that's weird, right? The first time when we did an interrogation like this. Maybe second time. Oh, nah, I'm messing up on timelines here. We, we interrogated so and number 89. Anyway, when we interrogated number 89, we know Pewter set that up to which Boss would not be able to enter the room with us. Okay, this time, Boss is here. Now look. I have a perception of boss that she's very cunning or very people people person, you know, very able to mend fences here. So if I mess up, I'm sure she's gonna step in. And <laughs> heaven forbid that Iris is able to kick the table and do exactly what number 89 did to me. <laughs> That'd be hilarious actually. Unexpected too. But what kind of questions Alpha Troop that Date is going to ask her, and I don't know, I mean, did, do you, would you guys question Iris like this? In this setting? Yes, she was the last person to see Renju, but I don't know, man. Seems extreme. I, I don't know. I don't know. Please answer honestly. However, you do not have to say anything that might incriminate you. Oh uh, yeah, good job of uh, going through the Miranda rights here. The right to remain silent? You're treating me like a criminal. Big facts, and that's messed up, Date. 
Not exactly. I'm just looking for the truth. You can't handle the truth, Date. What are you saying? I will tell you right now. I think you're innocent. But if you somehow prove me wrong, then I have no faith in humanity. I would appreciate your cooperation. Okay. I'm gonna work my way up, left, down, right. Alibi, older story, sunfish pocket. When did you find out Renjo was killed will be my last zinger of a question. So, let's start off with the alibi. What were you doing from 7 to 9 last night? Streaming. I was at home the whole time. I'm confident you were streaming. You're sure? My mom can uh, attest to that. Yes. Iba, thermograph. There is no noticeable rise in Iris's body temperature. She isn't lying. Not necessarily. So what, the results are inconclusive? We must consider the possibility that she is a natural liar. Jesus Christ, Iba. Jesus. I want to believe in her. Yeah, but, you know. She is Iris. Alright, but do you not really like Iris? I mean, look. I'm just saying. With that kind of confidence, her temperature wouldn't change. Correct. Never mind in another timeline. There's an option where Date believes every single word she says. Renju's estimated time of death was 8 p.m. last night. 8 p.m. 8 p.m. So, okay, okay. Look, check this out. She technically wasn't with him at 8 p.m. According to older story. If Iris' story is true, she couldn't have done it. Exactly. There is another possibility. Oh, please enlighten me, Iba. Even if Iris was at home, she could have killed Renju. What? The heck? How? Booby trap? It was trapped? She bugged the place? Damn, that's a lot of uh, unique setup. Like, she killed him, then went back, set up the arrangement. That's a lot of travel, a lot of resources. But, go on. You mean... Um, okay, I'm going to continue my process of, you know, like up, left, down, right? So older story, and then I guess we'll work our way back around. It's older story true. Here's what Oda told me. Yesterday around 6.15 p.m. You and Renju came out of the Sunfish Pocket Building. Is that true? Is it true? I do, I do, I do, I do love orange soda. But that's not the point. Neither here or there. Let's focus on your time out with Renju. Yes. Okay. What were you doing? Mr. Okira called me and told me he wanted me to come to Sunfish Pocket. ASAP. Around what time was that? 5 p.m., I think. Alright. Give or take a minute or two. I got ready, then headed over there. I guess I got there about an hour later. Date, I checked her call history. At 
4.58 p.m., there is a record of a call to Iris from Renju's phone. All right, so far so good. She seems to be very cooperative. And it's very appreciated that she's not lying right now. Okay. Now let's go with a off-topic question. I heard you used to work at Sunfish Pocket. That's right. How long? A little over a year. Over a year, alright. Would you say that Sunfish Pocket held you over? Mr. Okiura was awfully kind to not only support your idol career, but to also give you a side job at his uh, maid cafe. I'd say he's like a second father to you. Working there that long, you're probably pretty familiar with the equipment. Loaded uh, statement there, Date. Loaded statement. Yeah, I guess. Alright. When did you find out Ranju was killed? When did you find out Renju was killed? This morning, on the news. You know, I'm tired of people figuring ain't <laughs> tired of people figuring things out via the news. I figured they just, you know, fess up and say they were there at the scene. And you were with Renju last night? You didn't think to call the police and inform them of this? Oh, sorry. Sorry? Look, I mean, if it's an honest mistake and you didn't think too far ahead past the trees, I get it. But now you're in this predicament because you didn't have the foresight to see how you could be the one implicated for the murder of Ranju Okiura. Now look, tell me why you didn't call the police. Is that something you're supposed to do? Are you feigning stupidity? Are you trying to get one over on me? Are you thinking that I don't think you know you're supposed to do that. Now Iris, I know you're a smart young woman. Intelligence is a gift, might I say. And don't insult mine, I tell you. You're supposed to do a lot of things. One of them is not murder someone who did everything for you. <laughs> Oh man, I don't buy that, you know, something must have went down between her and Renju, right? Like, something that one of them got hurt, their feelings, and, and yeah, look man, I'm not, I'm not one to say Iris is not, you know, below hurtful things, right? You know, and like, <laughs> like she's capable of being mean. And, you know, her and Renju could have a falling out. Sure, I'm, I can buy that. And that's why, you know, you don't call the police. And then, sure, that, that kind of lines up. She says something to the effect, Well, good, I hope you die. And, okay, yeah, I wouldn't call the police either. I feel terrible. I had a podcast to record this morning, so... Your work schedule, okay. What was this podcast about? How to get away with murder? Is that what you're going to tell me? If I went to the police, I'd be late. Well, I respect your obligation. But I'm pretty sure the police would have uh, kindly accommodate your schedule. Nah, I'm just joking. See, smile. I'm capable of funness. And that would cause everyone a lot of trouble, you know? Okay, okay. You know, Iris, how, what would your mother think to see you in this position right now? A possible suspect of murder. 
Look, Iris. Your mother's a very nice lady. Has a problem with her arm. Doesn't need this stress. Why don't you tell me if your mother can uh, corroborate your alibi, your story? I'll ask again. You are sure you were at home around 8 p.m. yesterday? Yes. Very definitive, all right. Can I ask your mother about your alibi? Well, okay, Dante, but geez. Having, you know, her daughter in an interrogation room is gonna hurt your chances of, you know, landing a date. <laughs> hey boss You know, can we like not do this? Date, oh fine You wonder why I'm single and alone But anyway, anyway boss One quick question, as boss is, you know, basically Like a fly on the wall <laughs> I wonder, right, she's probably, if she is Like, the one who did all of this just laughing at all of this in the background like geez Date <laughs> these questions are great and you're totally off the mark I mean assuming boss is guilty okay, can I move to boss no I can't look at that nice camera okay look let's ask about are we gonna call her mom let's let's see let's find out you can but there'd be no point Why is that? She wasn't home at the time. You're gonna say she was out doing shopping? My mom wasn't home. Oh, well, well, all right. I, I, I would like to hear that from her now. Because I think that's a little bit too much of a coincidence. Too convenient that she was home. Not home. Not home? Hmm. Let me hear that from her first. She came back home early this morning. Huh. Early this morning. This morning? Well, she was out. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. That lines up conspicuously with the Kamakuras. This morning, they came back from a golfing trip. Was she out golfing? Or at least just there to watch? Now this is getting interesting. Yeah. Where was she? be specific if you know the details where was she I don't know hmm well we can piece together I'm pretty sure she was with the Kamakuras specifically perhaps so Shijima was with them on this golfing trip and we know from the past timeline that so Shijima and uh Iris' mother, Hitomi, are close, so it's not too off the mark to say So invited her out to that golfing trip and she obliged. She joined along and... Hmm. If this is true and my deduction has some weight, then Iris' facts about her mother not being home check out. You don't know. Come to think of it, Iris's mom had connections to Renju too. It seems like Renju is like the center of everything. Everyone is connected to him. Hitomi did mention that yesterday. Renju was my classmate at Eitoku High. We've known each other for 20 years now. However, we have nothing to link her to the case. You know... Is it possible that we have two killers instead of one? We keep thinking that the person who killed Renju is the same person that killed Shoko. But the more I think about it, the more I liken the culprit. I just feel like 
one got killed because of some bad connections and the other got killed of some personal vendetta hmm I'm seriously considering that a little bit however one major deterrent from there being two murderers is that there are different victims depending on which route you take and that is just something <sighs> I'm having my my doubt saying okay so one murderer definitely killed Shoko right and the other murderer goes down this line if if we are to believe that maybe the person who killed Renju is different then whoever killed Shoko then killed Iris in that timeline murders do seem possible because Renju is alive in the other timeline which means the person who killed Renju in that in this timeline did it was able to get close enough whereas the person in Iris's timeline didn't get a chance to I mean a la Iris is sus right think about it Renju didn't get a chance to kill her. Uh, Renju didn't get a chance to be one on one with Iris in Iris's timeline because he was always looking for her, right? Here, they got their one on one time. Renju turns up dead. But the same, this is what makes it interesting now that I, I'm breaking it down like this. In one timeline, Renju not seeking Iris as far as we know or he, well he called her at like 4 foot 58 5 but you get what I'm trying to say like Renju doesn't seem in this timeline like he needs Iris right he's not in dire straits he turns up dead flip the scene we know that now Renju needs to see Iris Iris turns up dead in the timeline okay All this to say, and we're gonna tie it back to Hitomi, right? Hitomi, in all this, is can also, like Shoko, connected to the shady people, like Shoshijima. But I am curious. Hmm. What was Hitomi doing last night? Oh boy. Alright. What were you doing with Renju? What were you doing with Renju? Answer truthfully now. He asked me about a job. Okay. What kind of job? He rented out Sunfish Pocket for a party and he wanted me to MC. Okay. That kind of connects to what Oda said, right? He just didn't know who rented it out, but it was Renju Okiura who rented it out. Huh. Well, who was the party for? That question is very vague. Whose birthday? Whose celebration? What are we holding a party? What? He's celebrating that Shoko died? I'm, I'm trying to figure it out. And yes, you would be a delightful MC. He said that it was an important party and that a lot of big shots were going to be there. Odd timing to hold a party after Shoko Nadami's death. With these said big shots who probably wanted her dead. But the girl he asked to do it originally got sick and couldn't come. Ah, so a last minute arrangement. But I turned him down. Wow, you are really big shot in it, huh? Not enough money for this job? 
Why? Because I'm just an internet idol. Whoa, 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 whoa. According to Oda, you're his savior. Otaku's love you. Internet idol? You're more than that, Iris. I've never done any emceeing before. Eh, you get used to it. Especially with important people being there? Alright, Iris. I'm gonna ask you about something very interesting before we go back to this subject. Surveillance cameras. You know how to work them, right? What about the surveillance camera? Do you know where those tapes were stored? What are you trying to say? It's more like what I think you're capable of. I'm just saying you know the location of those tapes and can thereby tamper with them to not have you been seen with Renju Okiura. Now look, whether you are, you know, filmed on those cameras or not, doesn't change the fact that you were the last person with them. It's not about what you know, Date, but what you can prove. Denzel Washington said that once. What did you do after you turned him down? I murdered him! Oh, is that a confession? <laughs> I left with Mr. Okira. You mean you left him there to die and rot? No! Out with it, Iris. Tell me the truth. You killed Renju. At 6.15 p.m. That must have been when Ota saw me. Abba, thermal scan. And after that? I asked Mr. Okira to take me home in his car. I got home at 7 p.m. I was home the rest of the night. What do you think, Iba? Seems pretty airtight to me, Date. But I do have one possibility. I cannot detect any contradictions. However, her story appears almost too organized. So are you saying that in an instant she didn't stutter, she was very accurate, makes her very, very, very tidy, one might say. Like this story was already being planned. Hmm. Criminal mastermind? Think about it from this perspective, Iba, and I ask my viewers to think. Iris is really good under pressure, and I do think that she's capable of remembering things accurately. All that to say, we still don't have a proper motive. Why would she kill Mizuki's parents? That right there could be her saving grace. Human memory is ambiguous. You expected her to stutter a little bit. Be off on those times? Hmm. Her use of exact times leads me to be suspicious. Hmm. I wonder, based on the timeline we played through, could that be like a brain tumor sign effect? Like, <laughs> Iris is the oddball when it comes to times. She's capable of just knowing everything right on the dot. That's true. Am 
Am I a suspect? Are we switching off to boss? Can boss take over? And she'd be like, all right, you're a suspect. <laughs> like, also, I like this effect of like just moving the camera and panning around. Also, let me let me say this. If Iris really wanted to, you know, cover things up, she would be more combative, right? But, you know, again, they're pitching this theory that she's a super genius, able to recollect all the times and have a story that seems to be exactly what we want to hear and gives her perfect alibis. And, I mean... Again, like, should we really just doubt everything she said? Knowing, like, the player knows, that if you played it like I did, her timeline first, that we never doubted her, or at least had that option to. We had that option where everything Iris said was gold. And here in this timeline, it's the complete 180. We have no option to believe her. Like she's questioning, is she a suspect? It's not like that. Of course, Date is trying to say it's not like that, but it feels like that. It's fine, Date. <laughs> it's true that I met with Mr. Okiura yesterday. But how do I put this? It's impossible that I'm the killer. There's that word again, impossible. Now look, I'm someone who looks at all possibilities. Therefore, until all possibilities meet their end, nothing is impossible. Why? I'm a teenage girl. Are we really gonna go with age, little lady? Because teenage girls are a lot more violent these days. But I also ask you this. Would you think I would not be doing my job properly if I just give you the benefit of the doubt based on your age? Heck no. I'm just exhausting all possibilities. Mr. Okiura is a fully grown man. I say a weapon evens things out. A blunt object, perhaps? Oh yeah, the body didn't have any blunt objects. I don't know. Intoxication. I do believe the body was intoxicated. That evens things out, if you ask me. Makes things a lot more easier. She's got a point. Oh, boss. Could you take over this interrogation, please? A girl like her could have stabbed, poisoned, or shot him dead, but strangling? No, it's still possible. You see... Okay, evidence. Sedation. A heavy concentration of sedatives were discovered in Renju's body. See? I don't know what benzozandapine formula is. I know I butchered that scientific, but hear me out. Renju was practically in a coma before he died. He wouldn't have struggled. So, Iris could have strangled him. Could. Wait a minute. Even if I was somehow able to kill him, the rest of it is impossible. Alright, alright, continue. How so? The rest of it? I'm really getting into this, but... Because, <laughs> like, the mood of this camera angle, and how Iris is... You know, not even entertaining the possibility. 
Because, like, she's saying it's straight up impossible. Now, you know, you would think, you know, all right, Date, I'll just keep proving you wrong, but you wouldn't use the impossible word, right? Like hanging up his body? How do you know that? Internet? The news? What do you mean? I'm talking about the state of the body. The state of the body has not been disclosed to the news. We just said the media to report that Renju has passed. He was murdered. It's all over the news. Oh. Huh. Well, call me Susie. I didn't know that. Boss, is it really all over the news, the state of the body? I just thought we give the media information about the death. But we didn't give the, all, all that details, right? That's true. Jesus, boss. Th this is where how... You see, we have to catch a killer. Alright? We don't just put all the details out there. The media just reports what we give them, alright? Renju weighed about 160 pounds. Even if she used her entire body weight, I don't think she could have hauled him up. Right. It would be hard for her to do it with her strength alone. But with a little ingenuity, it could be done. Ingenuity? Okay. This is very Danganronpa like. Okay. Mm. <laughs> mm. Okay. Ingenuity. Ingenuity. Renju's corpse was discovered at the Maid Cafe Sunfish Pocket. Mm hmm. Hanging from a beam on the ceiling by a wire. Okay. He was found over the counter. The wire was attached on both ends. One end was attached to a hook that was embedded inside Renju's jaw. The other end was attached to beer kegs found on the floor. The kegs hold approximately 20 liters of liquid. They weigh approximately 55 pounds each. Alright, I'm gonna show this. Because everything else seems kind of, you know, off. I'm thinking she used this system, this rigmarole, as a pulley system. And pulled the body, kind of like stage curtains, up. It went like this. First, Renju was laid out on the counter. I am so tempted to play the climactic uh, ending music from Danganronpa when Makoto, you know, or like Suichi would like lay out the crime. <laughs> Next, the wire was thrown over the beam and connected to the hook in his jaw. Then all you need to do is put the three beer kegs on the counter. You think a teenage girl could have done that? Hey. Listen, boss. Teenage girls have access to the internet. They can do this. I'm sure it was hard. The kegs weighed 55 pounds each. Yeah, she can do it. I mean, we gotta account for time here. She had time to, like, really push and struggle through this. That's not impossible, even for a teenage girl. I guess it isn't impossible. After that, you get on top of the counter, hook the other end of the wires to the kegs, 
And then, what do you think happens if you kick the kegs off the counter? The body gets strung up. The three kegs weighed 165 pounds altogether. Renju weighs five pounds less. Hmm, I guess that would make it possible. You see, boss, impossible. It's only limited by our imagination. Yes, imagination. One can say that a teenage girl's imagination is at its peak. I'm just saying, boss, that we need to remain objective. But, there is one more thing. What? Considering the state of the crime scene, it's clear Renju was killed elsewhere and brought to where we found him. I am certain that I can answer that somehow. If Iris is the culprit, how did she move the body? I know, I know. You're going to say you couldn't have moved a 160 pound body. Unfortunately for her, she could have. How? Oh man. How the culprit managed to move the corpse to Sunfish Pocket. Well, let us carefully examine everything. My first initiation, initiation, my initial thought would be the elevator. Let's take a look, Iba. Sunfish Pocket is located on the second floor. According to the records, from 6.30 p.m. until the body was found, Elevator stopped on the second floor only once. At 8.55 p.m. The total weight detected in the elevator was approximately 310 pounds. Hmm. Seems like it to me that a body and our culprit were in the elevator together. Maybe. But no. Hmm. Do we combine Renju's weight? Iba, let's take a look at this. Renju weighs approximately 160 pounds. Okay. Renju's weight is 160 pounds. The question is, how did Iris move the corpse? Okay. Not the elevator. Where? Let's take a look, Ivo. The autopsy determined that Renju vacated his bowels for muscle relaxation upon death. However, no trace of this was found on the corpse or at the scene. Okay. This means that it is highly likely Renju was killed elsewhere and moved to where he was found. Yeah, but that doesn't give us the answer to how it was moved. It just proves that it was moved. Huh. I know this watch. It's Renju's favorite. I found it inside an oil drum at Sunfish Pocket. That means... Oh, huh. well then. Oil drum? The oil drum inside Sunfish Pocket. The type that has a lid you can open with about a 200 liter capacity. Empty, it weighs approximately 44 pounds. Hmm, hmm. I get it. You put it in the oil drum. And then... 
you combine it with the elevator. What? Then the weight. Oh my. Oh my. I feel stupid. Let's look at the autopsy. Wrench's estimated TOD is yesterday, around 8 p.m. Numerous hemorrhages in the blood vessels of the throat and face indicate strangulation. The weapon used to commit the murder was some kind of twisted cloth. The criminal likely wrapped it around Renju's neck and pulled. Renju then suffocated. The more precise cause of death is cerebral circulation failure due to vessel closure in the neck. I know all of this scientific stuff. Perhaps. In short, Renju was strangled from behind with some kind of cloth or rope. Again, that doesn't tell us how the body was moved. Hmm, transportation. The heck? Well, oh, it is not the elevator. Okay. You have to prove that Iris could have moved Renju's body. Oh, Iba. That is your current task. This will not help you accomplish that. I feel stupid. Elevator. Elevator. Huh. Well then. The, uh, the watch? It's stuck on the time of when the body was moved. Do you know what this is? Am I right to assume that? That, that the watch is still on the time from when the body was moved? I, I didn't get a good look at the freaking time, but... Huh. Let, let us dig down this rabbit hole. It's Renju's favorite watch. This was discovered inside an empty oil drum at Sunfish Pocket. Which means Renju was inside it. Ah, okay. Well, whoopsie daisy. I, my theory of it just being placed there as a sign to us was kind of lacking merit. Instead, it just proves that Renju was inside that oil drum. Hey, Date, I know you're on a roll right now, but could you please report things like that according to protocol? Boss protocol will get you in trouble all the time. What are you trying to say? What is watch? Not Jeopardy's protocol. I'm saying that it wouldn't be so hard to move a body if it were in a cylinder. You would just have to roll it. So you're saying Renju's body was moved inside the drum? Which is how the watch came off. But the suspect didn't notice it. I'm not saying anything for sure. Just pointing out that it's possible. I didn't do it! Iris Nodi the raise your voice. We're all calm, sociable people here, and we just want to get to the truth. You don't even have any witnesses! That sounds like something a murderer would say. If I were rolling an oil drum in the middle of the street, people would have noticed! You could have put it in a car and driven it. Well, Date, you're assuming she can drive a car. Doesn't mean you can't drive a car. You shouldn't. You shouldn't drive without a license, kids. I'm just saying. Doesn't mean you can't drive. Even an AI can drive nowadays. Yes, Date. I drive your car all the time. Are you mocking me? Of course I am. 
Don't make sudden outbursts like that. Are you talking to Aiba or are you talking to Iris? You insulted me! Just be quiet. Date, are you okay? You're talking to yourself. It happens all the time when great minds have to just piece together evidence, Iris. It's all good. I don't know. Um... Who are you talking to? Anyway, Iris, you weigh about 105 pounds, right? W where is this coming from? And actually, it's 106. If only you weighed more. Or less. That is none of your business. Well, Iris... Good thing that your weight is public information. I went to your doctor and I asked him to disclose such information. Dante, you're a liar because doctors are not supposed to disclose medical records. I hacked into your medical records. No, I mean that your weight is relevant to the case. If the oil drum was used to transport the corpse, then the possibility of the suspect being around 105 pounds is extremely likely. Because the elevator's total weight. Why do you say that? Oh, okay, well just give me three off the bat that I didn't use. Alright, but it has to be in the correct order, correct? So, oil drum. Oh. The weight of the oil drum is one of the key clues, but there is something else. Plus Renju's weight. This is enough. I need another clue. Finally, the elevator record. Iris, on which floor is Sunfish Pocket located? Hit him with that knowledge. On the second floor. That's right. So, I checked the elevator records. Before the corpse was discovered, the elevator only stopped at the second floor once. I have to uh, really, really take a moment to appreciate this. It's probably the best scene and best sequence of the game so far. You know, like, I'll, I'll even venture to get, say, like, better than the Somnium simply because I just feel the tension in the room and it could be just a huge credit to the voice actors here man they just are nailing the lines and it's really good now I'm just like amazed at 8 55 p.m. I'm like just piecing things together I'm like okay yeah yeah pretty good Date good detective work you're not useless in this timeline and we discovered that the total cargo weight on the elevator was about 310 pounds. Renju weighed 160. The oil drum weighs 44. Together, that's about 205. Subtracting that from 310. And we get your weight. You weigh. This doesn't look good. Why are you? Now this obviously doesn't prove you're the murderer. A lot of people weigh 105 pounds. Probably Ota. I think Ota weighs 105 pounds. Soaking wet. Or, someone could have put 105 extra pounds in the elevator, sent it up, and taken the stairs. To throw us off the trail. 
however. Dante, stop. Iris is acting strange. Don't turn around. Why not? Just stay put. Keep your eyes on the wall. Oh, okay, cool. Jesus, boss, blink, please. You look so invested in this, but in a bad way. There are several cameras in this room. Okay, so we're gonna check the surveillance cameras? Oh, man. <laughs> Tents. Uh, we're not gonna leave this, man. We, we're gonna finish this. We're gonna see where this uh, goes. Let's go. Let's go. Two surveillance cameras installed at the corners of the ceiling, and one camera on a tripod. I hacked each to gain access to their recordings. Look at this. What am I looking at? She's fidgeting around. Is she doing something under the desk? That's what it looks like. But we need to confirm something before we confront her. We need to know that she's in fact doing something under the desk. Oh my god. <laughs> this is some impressive, uh, intense twist here. Like, Iris is, you know, has a, a certain action that's suspicious, and, you know, I don't know, man. I, I'm preferred now, now, right? The bad interrogation, man, where number 89 just beat the crap out of us. Here, man, it's like, yo, is Iris about to, like, you know, lose her mind and, uh, you know, <laughs> reveal another side? Hmm. I don't know. See, having played the Iris route, I know that she has these tendencies to get cold. Uh, I believe one of them was muscle weakness. So, again... That's just me having the benefit of playing the other timeline first. Without turning around? Yes. How would I do that? I mean, what do you think? That girl is the best suspect we have, without a doubt. Same here, boss, same here. But the best isn't exactly what's the truth. We can't say for sure yet. You seem awfully sure. I didn't say that. I just said it was possible for Iris to commit the crime. By the way, boss, how much you weigh? Don't you get tired from standing up the whole time? What's this? Do I detect some concern from you, Date? Thank you. But I'm fine. I'm used to standing up. And I'm used to making it stand up. What are you doing later on tonight? Uh, are you holding up? Where is this coming from? I don't know. Friendship? Kindness? Maybe I want to take you out to dinner? I'm fine. Let's just get through this. Okay. 
Anything you want to say? I have something to say, but not now. All right, boss. All right. What is it? Why are you staring at me? It's nothing. Boss is looking at me strangely. Well... The good old mirror trick. What do we see? Well then. Iris, what are you thinking? What is that thing? Oh man. Hey, answer me, Iris. She's definitely hiding something, Date. Yes, she is. Her and Oda are in cahoots. Sink with her. Oh man, we gotta sink with her. And boss told us to sink with her, so we gotta sink with her. Cause you know, then we won't get a chance to have her make it stand up. Iris is experiencing Medication is working perfectly. Aw oh, man. How about it, Date? Think you can do it? Not a problem. Get it started. I don't like this sink. It feels mean. The time limit is six minutes. So before time is up. I know. Then let's begin. She shouldn't have been texting Oda. That doesn't make him look good. And it kind of makes my theory look better. Just saying. Just saying. This is the warehouse, in sync form. What is this place? Whoa, I'm pretty sure this is the warehouse in sync form, or insomnium form. Anyway, Alpha Troop, this is a great place to leave off. Good cliffhanger, one might say. And this is the first time I kind of end an episode within the mind of a target. Yes, so when we hop back in, we'll be syncing up further into the mine of Iris Sangan. Iris is hiding something. But what could it be? Find out next time. I am confident that we will be able to clear Iris because I don't think she did it, but she perhaps knows who did it. And that's pretty much, you know, abetting a criminal, which is punishable by law. But look, this is what I think is makes this game so unique, right? Iris can be one character, but then here she's a different character. That I don't, I, I don't know. How, I like that, right? I like that in the game where you know their actions are not one hundred and ten percent set in stone, right? And the whole timeline thing, at least in Iris's thing, you know, they break that wall. And then you you can start thinking, okay, well, in Iris in this timeline is different than the Iris in the other timeline. And, well, this if you go by, like, timelines, the one that Iris died in, the one that Iris resurrected, and now in this Iris, that's three different Irises. Right? So that's so cool that, like, this what is coming down to where we have to completely 180 on Iris. So... Anyway, that's just a good thought to just leave this on, right? Iris is not who she is. And she has something for us. We got to dig down deep in the truth to get these answers. So, take care and I'll see you next time.